Hey everyone, it's me, Yvonne Emil Elizondo from Silver Moon Astrology and Transpersonal Counseling. And I am here today with the sky update, the astrological update for February 14th, which is Love Day, Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow. And for the full moon in Leo, that happens 48 hours later on the 16th. And we've got some really, really good energy this time around. And I'm so excited to share this with you. So, but before I do that, I'm just going to say that there are some beautiful crows that are hanging out right here by my window. And I don't know if you all can hear them, but um, super witchy. I love when they show up, but any ADHD moment there. Anyhow, I already got myself in trouble with my daughter this morning um, with this whole ADHD. Like, I'm sorry, that's how just how my brain functions, right? But anyhow, I took her to work really early this morning. There's a point to this. I took her to work really early this morning. And as we were waiting at Dunkin' Donuts for our favorite coffee, I looked up in the sky because it was like 5.30 in the morning. And I thought, wow, there's this, there's this plane that's just really, really bright in the sky. And I remember seeing a, a bright plane, a plane like that, you know? And then I realized, oh my gosh, that's Venus. Venus is in her full glory. I posted a picture, not professional, obviously, but she is in her full glory about an hour before the sun comes up. So if you are interested in seeing her, she looks absolutely amazing. And right now, Venus and Mars are doing this dance in the sky, which I'm going to talk about. I'm going to share that with you. So you can't really see Mars right at that time because he's hiding behind Venus, but she is absolutely gorgeous. And Venus, I love Venus. She's my ruling planet. But I did post, just a quick update, I posted a video, uh, I think last week, about how Mercury retrograde and Venus retrograde tried to kill me. I had all sorts of health issues going on. And so just a quick update. Yeah, a few days after I recorded that video, I ended up in the emergency room because I really thought I was having a heart attack. And I know I'm making light of it here, okay, but it was really serious. I was kind of scared. No, I was really scared. And uh, anyhow, I you know show up at the emergency room and it's still heart related venus is about the heart and i'm like please don't be so mean to me <laughs> venus just be gentle with me uh anyhow good news so far is that uh my heart looked really good according to the tests that they did and they're like there's nothing really wrong with you doctors think it's anxiety i personally didn't feel it was anxiety but i do feel that it was stress i was under an immense amount of stress uh, this past couple of months. And so my heart just kind of took the brunt of it, but I am hoping that Venus is going to be more gentle with me. I am going to a cardiologist just in case could be acid reflux, could be asthma. I don't know, but we will figure it out because I know she's going to be more gentle with me now that love day is going to happen and that she is really going to be shining with this, um, full moon in Leo. So let's take a look at the chart. Now I'm going to show you the chart because I like to teach, right? So uh, I'm going to show you the chart. But the chart that I'm going to show you is for the full moon. Now, what I am about to say here is uh, pertains to the 14th, which is tomorrow, which is love day. Absolutely. I hope everybody has their loved ones is getting a Valentine's vibes already. But I love this feature. Look at that. So this is for the 14th. Okay. Now, on the 14th, on Valentine's Day, the moon is actually going to be here in Cancer until about 5.30-ish a.m. Central Standard Time, okay? And that's when uh, the moon will ingress into Leo. So the majority of the 14th, the moon will be in Leo anyway. So a lot of this energy that I'm going to be referring to pertains to the 14th and to the 16th with the actual uh, full moon. Now, the full moon happens on, mm, 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 let me check here real quick, happens on 10.53 a.m. on Wednesday. So again, two, 48 hours of this beautiful, beautiful energy. So let's take a look. So the full moon is going to be in Leo. Uh, the moon will also be in Leo on the 14th, as I just said. On the opposite end of the full moon, we have the sun in Aquarius. The sun is at detriment in Aquarius. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this beautiful interplay between Mars and Venus in Capricorn and how that energy is connecting beautifully to this Uranus 
and Taurus, Uranus is about change and change, uniqueness, um, progressive ways of doing things. Neptune is also involved and um, Jupiter's involved to some extent, but we're really gonna focus more on, on Neptune this time around. So, wow, we got lots of really good stuff going on, okay? All right, let's focus on this Leo energy because Leo is a beautiful, beautiful energy. If you have any Leos in your life, you know that they work from the heart, okay? Leo represents the heart, all right? Especially in astrology. Leo represents the heart. It's a fixed fire sign, okay? And so I always I always equate, I don't know where I learned this. I know I, I picked this up from somebody and I can't remember who I picked it up from. So I don't wanna take credit for this, but somewhere along the line, somebody shared this with me. And Leo is like, like walking into a cabin or into a cozy home and, and lighting that, that fireplace. It's that you kind of sit there and you're comfortable and it's the fire doesn't really go anywhere, but it lasts a really long time. That's fixed Leo fire energy. It's beautiful. It's comfortable. It's, it's it works from the heart. You know, you're going to hear me say heart, heart energy, a whole bunch this video, because that really is the energy that we're going to be working with. So this Leo energy, so if you have any Leos, okay, I have some beautiful, amazing Leos. They always work from the heart. I've known one since I was 18. In fact, I got a heart-shaped engagement ring um, from him uh, back in the day. So we're still friends and he's still an amazing person. Anyhow, shout out over. But this beautiful heart energy is really about the Leo energy. There's a loyalty that comes with Leo, that fixed fire. There's that motivation. There's that sense of, in, of, of taking that love and that compassion and that goodness and that leadership and, and wanting to motivate not only themselves, but motivate others. Leo is the energy that is going to potentially focus on themselves first. And that's why people say, oh my gosh, Leos just want all the attention on themselves. Yeah, that's pretty true because they're the sun. The sun wants to be seen, right? There's this motivation with the sun. The sun is, is at home in Leo, right? There's this fire energy. And the thing though with Leos is that they're not always just about themselves. They're willing to take other people with them. That's why they make great coaches, um, great teachers, great leaders, because they always want to bring that connectiveness with other people. And that's why for this Valentine's energy, it's going to be amazing. And this full moon is also going to be amazing. There's going to be that essence of connectedness from the heart. Now, on the opposite side of this moon in Leo is the sun. And I mentioned that the sun in Aquarius is in detriment. That means that it doesn't function all that great. Why? Because the sun belongs in Leo. That's where it's at home. Okay. So now it's on the opposite end. And Aquarius energy is like stealthy, stainless steel. It's beautiful, but it's air. It's fixed air. It's not fire. It's not energizing and motivating. It is very mental in its capacity, right? That's why Aquarius energy is about logistics and strategy and um, innovation. It is not that warm fire energy of Leo. It is that stealthy stainless steel energy of that savviness that goes on up here. But this full moon is going to be focused on that fire energy. And that's why I'm like, oh, so wonderful for, for Valentine's Day, okay? Okay, so let's talk about the other parts that are gonna be influencing this energy as well. So we have Venus, which I just mentioned. I'm hoping she's done, you know, giving me heart issues, but we have Venus here. And Venus in Capricorn tends to have a more practical approach, right? There's that sense of, um, connecting Venus and Capricorn is not a hyper affectionate energy, which is why really and really I'm looking forward to this Leo energy because that's what's, what's going to encourage the affection. But she does connect in a more practical way. And what I mean by that is she will be the type of energy that says, Oh, I'm going to put gas in your car. Not super affectionate energy, but it's practical, and that's how she shows love. Okay, there's that uh, connectedness of, oh, I see that you're having a difficult time today, so I'm going to come over and ease up your your load. That's the kind of energy that Venus in Capricorn is, but she's still Venus, and she's still graceful, especially in Capricorns, because we Capricorn energy, just saying, okay, we 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 do like that gracefulness, and we do like that sense of working on a more practical level. Okay, Mars. Now Mars in Capricorn 
it is exalted. It is absolutely doing its best job in Capricorn. Mars does really great. In, it's at home in Aries and at home in Scorpio, but it is really functioning in its glory in Capricorn. So now you have these two beautiful planets, right? Doing this dance. And I'm going to talk to you about the dance in just a few seconds here. But this Mars energy likes to get things done. And Capricorn energy is about getting the job done. So we're going to put it all together, right? Mars is about getting the job done. It is, it is motivated. It is action oriented in Capricorn. And you have Venus that's practical. And it's about also connecting in this more, you know, um, non fiery way, but it also likes to get the job done. Now, in the skies and in mythology, when we bring this beautiful Venus and Mars energy, Venus is that feminine, not necessarily female, I want to make sure I'm making that perfectly clear. It is feminine, it is receptive energy. Mars is masculine it is active energy not necessarily male because we can have females that are active and we can have males that are receptive so you see where i'm going with this so it is the interplay of the balance between that feminine receptive energy that and when i say passive i'm not saying that females are passive let's be very clear okay what i'm saying is that there's a stillness that happens with venus okay where there is that active energy oriented um, energy of Mars, right? Mars is fire, Venus is love. And so you get the two together and now you have this amazingly passionate dance that's going on in the skies and what perfect, perfect, perfect timing for this to happen then on Valentine's Day. Now, this Venus Mars energy, I'm going to show you the chart one more time because I like to teach and you know, whatever you learn from it, you learn from it. If you don't learn anything from it, okay, whatever. But typically Mars and Venus Okay, hang out together for about two weeks, every 18, 19 months or so. But this is a special time because they will be hanging out in the sky for about two months. Now, let me just show you what happened. Venus was um, transiting this way and then she turned retrograde and she connected with Pluto again, which was when she was trying to kill me. And then she moved, ingressed all the way back into Capricorn in her retrograde. Now she's, she's stationed at the end of January, and then she is now moving direct, but she's moving very, very, very slowly. Mars just kind of zipped through, you know, Sagittarius and is zipping through uh, Capricorn and has now is now catching up with Venus. And that's why we're going to see this interplay for about two months, because the, as Mars moves forward, Venus is going to start picking up speed and will Cat will continue to keep up with Mars. And so that's why we're having this love essence, right? This, this magical energy motivation and aesthetics and beauty and love, which is what Venus represents. Venus is about the interconnectedness. It's about the heart. It's about money and finances and those things that we appreciate. Mars is about getting it done. It's about passion, motivation. So what is this full moon about? Well, Anything that you want, that you are passionate about, that you want the energy out there to manifest because there's that balance of, you know, passive and active. And there's a very balanced energy of motivation and beauty and passion. That's what you should be focusing on this full moon. And what a wonderful energy for this Valentine's Day. I mean, it's like Mars and Venus, right? In the sky. It's like Aphrodite and Aries together and doing their beautiful, passionate dance. So how does Uranus come into the picture? Well, I would say this energy is probably going to be encouraged by doing things differently. Uranus is about change. It's about being unique. It's about eccentrism. Now, do you have to do something eccentric on Valentine's Day? Not necessarily, but hey, if that's what you want to do, then by all means, express yourself that way. This is the opportunity to do something different with your partner, maybe, or with your friends that you hadn't done in a really long time. I, I don't know, go outside, sit on the roof, you know, grab a bottle of wine, enjoy, you know, the stars, the sky, something like that. Just don't fall off and hurt yourself because I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> Anyhow, so do something unique this time around intentionally. Yeah, that Neptune energy connects beautifully by sextile with that Mars, Venus in Capricorn. And so what does that mean? That means that there's that essence of really tapping into that Piscean energy of 
um, spirituality and compassion and doing things differently. And the theme I think for this, 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 this whole week should be, let's just be love. Let's just be love. Just be love. Oh my God, the world needs love right now. Like, but can we just, let's just be love. Yes. That is what the full moon is about. Anyhow, if you want to learn more about your astrology, um, reach out. Again, this is a, just a general overview of the energy that you might be working with. But if you want to know more about how this energy um, connects with your life, reach out. Okay, I'm at Silver Moon Astrology and Transpersonal Counseling. Now, I did say last week that my website was absolutely going to be up by this week. But considering the fact that I ended up in the emergency room and I really wasn't feeling all that well for about three days out of this week, I think I get a pass. And so we'll absolutely be up this following week. But in the meantime, um, you can email me at info at silvermooncounseling.org. I'll put that information in the description, but it's info at silvermoonastrology.org. And yeah, let's be love. I'm so excited about this energy, y'all. Take Take good care of each other. Take good care of yourself. And if you don't have a partner on Valentine's Day, like me, I'm single. I'm going to be really, really, really taking care of me. I'm going to be taking care of my daughter and loving my friends. And let's just be love. All right, everyone. Take care. Blessed be.